This is the Mercedes GLA, and it's effectively a Mercedes A-Class, which has been jacked up by just over two inches, which may not sound like much, but if I jack myself up by over two inches, I'm now nicely over six foot tall and therefore infinitely more desirable. So I should get a lot more likes now on the dating websites. Now you do have to pay for this extra desirability. So like for like, it's about four and a half grand more than the A-Class, but then the GLA does get all wheel drive as standard. Now, if you click up there to go to carwire.co.uk, you can compare offers from dealers and buy at a price you're confident in. And on average, people save £3,600 on a new car through CarWow. Now, you'll see that for an SUV, it's not actually that tall because me, at 5 foot 11-ish, can actually look over the top of this car. But I do like the look of this car, especially the back end. I think it's really stylish. Speaking of which, if I open the boot, the capacity on this car is about 40% greater than on the equivalent A-Class, so there's more room for all your luggage. There's also hardly any load lip to lift stuff over. On an A-Class, it's a massive load lip, which is really annoying. Under here, you've got some underfloor storage, which is handy. There's cubby spaces here at the sides. You've got tethering points, a 12-volt socket, you've got a ski hatch. Also, when I fold down the seats, you will see they lie completely flat, so it's a nice, flat, usable load area. Also, this car has an automated tailgate. Now, let's move on to the back seats because, well, here in the rear, now I just put these in place so I can illustrate how much room we've got here, which actually is a lot better than the A-Class. So, headroom's pretty decent, so is knee room, and people over six foot will be fine here in the back. Now, the problem is that children might not like it all that much because the windows are quite small, and these integrated headrests, they they stop the view forward, so it does feel a little bit claustrophobic and dark and dingy back here. Another slight issue with this car is that while well, the footwells are pretty small and the body is pretty narrow, so it's not that great for carrying three in the back at once, a BMW X1 is way better. Now, if you click up there, you can actually watch our detailed practicality review and see what it's like with three people in the back, how easy it is to fit a child seat, and just how much stuff we could fit in this car's boot. And speaking of practicality, actually, there are some nice features in this car I love these pop-out cup holders, oh yes, that's cool. And the door bins here in the back as well, they can hold a one litre bottle of water. And this brings me onto the front of the car. You see, cubby spaces throughout this GLA are pretty decent. Yes, yeah, so the front door bins can hold, well, way bigger than this actually. Also the glove box, it's a reasonable size. There's also some more storage under here and a couple of USB inputs for the infotainment system. Speaking of which, well, it's okay to use, but I do find that in the BMW X1 slicker. This car has the mid-level sat nav, so it's by Garmin, and it does look a little bit cheap for what you'd expect for a car of this price point. Now, if you click up there, you can actually see our full in-depth video review of the infotainment system and have another look around this car's cabin. And you'll see that actually the interior design is pretty sporty. I do like the look of it. It's very similar to the A-Class, actually. And just like the A-Class, it does feel a little bit cheap in places. I mean, the materials down here, oh yeah, they certainly don't pass the car wow flick test. Now though, it's time to hit the road to see what the GLA is like to drive. Now, like I said at the beginning of this review, the GLA is based on the A-Class, but I do find it better to drive. Now, the main reason for that is that you've got jacked up suspension, and that just makes this car more comfortable, and that matters a lot because the A-Class is a little bit too firm riding, I think. So, as you move at the range, you do get sportier suspension, which is firmer, and bigger wheels, and that does start to impair the ride quality somewhat, so just be aware of that. And there's not really a trade-off in terms of handling. The sportier cars, well, the supposedly sportier cars, they don't really go around corners any better. And part of the problem for this is the fact that the, the steering, it just doesn't feel that good. It's, you can't really tell what the front wheels are doing. You just kind of turn the wheel and no. Another slight issue is noise. You get quite a lot of roar from the tyres. There is a bit of wind noise as well, but it's not such a problem. And then there's the visibility. So this swooping pillar, which makes the car look sporty, does kind of get close to your head and it creates a bit of a blind spot there. The worst thing is the small rear window. You've got huge rear pillars and it can be a bit of a pain when you're pulling in and out at junctions. Now, if you click up there, you can join me for a 360 degree passenger ride video and see for yourself. So you can get the GLA with the choice of petrol and diesel engines. I'd avoid the 1.6 litre petrol because it's a little bit slow and you can't get it with an automatic gearbox, nor four wheel drive if you want it. This is the 250 petrol, which is actually a two litre and it can do 0 to 60 in 6.6 .6 seconds and it's pretty quick and you get four-wheel drive and an automatic gearbox as standard, and I like the auto. I'm not a big fan of Mercedes manuals, if you ask me, actually. The economy is supposed to be around 43 miles per gallon, but if I look at the trick computer, I'm getting just under 30. 
Uh, now most people want a diesel and the entry level 200D is probably going to be good enough for most people and it'll help you save on price as well because it doesn't come with an automatic gearbox as standard nor four wheel drive that you can spec it up if you want to but really are you going to need four wheel drive in this car? No, no, no you're not. As with all cars the GLA is a mixture of good and bad and so here are five annoying things about this Mercedes. Some of the trim down here is so sharp you can even shave a twig with it. You can't quite fit the parcel shelf under the false floor. No, no, mm, yeah, definitely no. Unlike the Audi Q3, the GLA doesn't have supportive gas struts to help you open the bonnet, so it's a bit of a workout. Oh, yeah, that's enough of that. You can't get the GLA with such a wide choice of engines as you can with the A-Class. I think Mercedes could have bothered to line up the top of the dash with the top of the door trim because it looks a little bit, well, it was built for a different car. Though it does give you some way to store your mobile phone, I guess. However, it's not all bad news. Here are five cool features about the GLA. Little clips mean that the seat belts don't snag on the rear seats when you fold them down. It's nice and handy. The car's bonnet automatically pops up in the event of an accident to help protect pedestrians. Plus, when it was tested by Euro NCAP in 2014, it got one of the highest scores for adult occupant protection in the crash test. You can get the car with downhill speed regulation. Perfect for easing you down that steep ramp at the multi-storey car park. The exposed eyes of fixed anchor points make it much easier to locate the child seat. The high level parking distance guide lights are really useful when you're trying to reverse. Now, if you click it there, you can go to carwow.co.uk to get more information and save an average of £3,900 on a new GLA. So then, overall, my verdict on this car, should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should consider the GLA. It's a good looking car. It's just a little bit compromised in places. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it and click on the CarWire logo to subscribe to our channel. If you click on the video windows, you can watch our detailed practicality, 360 degree passenger ride and full in-depth video review for the Mercedes GLA. Now, did you know that Mercedes registered a four-pointed star back in 1909, but they stuck with the usual three-point star instead?